Wrestling Oklahoma. So make sure to support us if, you, if you're able to. And we can't thank you enough if you're, if you're supporting us further. So thank you guys so much. But with that being said, are you guys ready for your first contest? about to get underway here in Unified Wrestling Oklahoma. I am Diamond Jim James Southern alongside the Velvet Voice himself, Mr. Walker Stewart. We are about to get underway here at American Legion Mohawk Post 308 in Tulsa. And James, there's no better way to start off a UWO event than with defiant Derek James. You see marvelous Mike Andrews making his way to the ring. His client, defiant Derek James. Coming out of a, a local native here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Taking on his mentor, a little mentor versus student to start things off. Defiant Derek James has a very tough challenge up against him as he faces his own trainer, the brideless groom, Brandon Groom. You know, it's a tale as old as time, James Southern. Derek James and Brandon Groom, these two men know each other in and out, forward and backward, side to side. One thing's for certain, this one is gonna be competitive. It'll be interesting to see. Brandon Groom has taught Derek James everything he knows, but has Brandon Groom taught him everything that he truly knows? What are those little secrets that Brandon Groom withheld from Derek James, and will he be able to use those to gain the win tonight? Bristow's most eligible bachelor making his way to ringside, getting the hugs from the, uh, one can only assume, the eligible bachelorettes. Brandon Groom taking his time, taking in this adulation from the Tulsa faithful. They love them some Brandon Groom, don't they, Walker? Well, they most definitely do, but I have to correct you on one thing. He's not just the most eligible bachelor in Bristow, Oklahoma. He's the most eligible bachelor in the entire state of Oklahoma. This is Unified Wrestling Oklahoma after all, James. Indeed, where all the forces unite, the brightless groom. Uh, looks like he's gonna have to keep looking a little further. It looks like that. Uh, Bride is not groomless, but he will have to keep on looking. But he's got a mighty tough challenge. Before he finds a bachelorette, he has got to get through the defiant one and marvelous Mike Andrews at ringside. Flowers uh, rode the ceiling there a little bit, Walker, but they still found their intended target. Yeah, potentially so. Potentially, Brandon Groom could have walked into this matchup tonight saying, I'm looking to find myself a bachelorette. What better way to impress the woman of Brandon Groom's dreams than to win a professional wrestling contest over a man, the stature of Derek James. Derek James, a former UWO champion in his own right. He held that championship for quite an impressive reign. Uh, and you know, that's gotta be something that's in the back of his mind. He wants to regain that UWO championship. Derek James feels like he has been cheated uh, at that New Year's Eve show where he lost the UWO title to our reigning defending champ, Christopher Morrison. Lest we forget though, Derek James has that sure shot contract in his back pocket. He could pull that out at any time, Walker, and challenge our champion, Christopher Morse. Well, we're gonna have to see if he's even able to make it through the brideless groom. You don't want to upset a man without a groom on his side, without a bride on his side. He actually has a groom. He is the groom, is the groom sir. I'm that is correct. Rideless, but perhaps not winless. That's the goal for Brandon Groom here in Tulsa. There's a period of time in Brandon Groom's career where he was one of the most highly scouted professional athletes in the sport of professional wrestling, an FCW standout in Florida Championship Wrestling, a former WWE developmental territory, as you're aware. Spending plenty of time underneath legendary minds like Tom Pritchard and Steve Kern learning his craft. You know some of those uh, tips and tricks have been passed on to Derek James. 
but as I said earlier, you know there's got to be those one or two things that Brandon Groom hasn't passed on, and maybe that's the key to victory for Groom tonight. What are those? I'm not quite sure, but you know Groom has got something up his sleeve. Knowledge right now, the presence of one marvelous Mike Andrews at ringside. Mike Andrews has definitely played a factor in the result of Derek James matches in the past. No doubt about it. Derek James had control of that side headlock, now a hammer lock by Brandon Groom. But Mike Andrews has certainly been a factor in many of Derek James matches. Uh, many would argue he's the reason Derek James held on to the UWO title as long as he did. But uh, nonetheless, uh, having a manager in your side is just another tool in the arsenal for Derek James. He's a technician. At one point, we called him the teenage technician, now 21 years old. Six years experience as a professional. Derek James is well-rounded as, as he is. Sometimes having somebody like Mike Andrews on the outside can greatly benefit your chances. Right now, it looks like Derek James doesn't need that, though. He's got a headlock there, or a head scissors, excuse me. Brandon Groom floating over into the, looks like he's going for a modified version of that knee lock here. The marvelous Mike Andrews has gone on record to state that he considers himself to be the mind behind the magic when it comes to defying Derek James. Derek James certainly had a lot of success on his own alongside uh, his tag team tunnel vision with Logan Knight. But certainly since Mike Andrews has come into play into a cover now, only a two count though. Brandon Groom maneuvering uh, Derek James's weight around. Since marvelous Mike Andrews has come into the picture though, things have certainly gone Derek James's way as we mentioned winning that UWO championship as well as other championships across the state but that doesn't help you necessarily in a test of strength like this. Trying to compete for that hold there, trying to drive the shoulder and elbow of Brandon Brown backwards, locking them up. We've been talking a lot about the student versus teacher dynamic in this matchup, but I also want to acknowledge the age differential between these two. Talk about a 21-year-old Derek James versus a 43-year-old Brandon Groom, and you're going to have to see in this matchup if the, the higher age of Brandon Groom is going to be an experience advantage, if anything. That's another aid, and just about as long as Derek James has been alive, Brandon Groom has been around wrestling, whether it's amateur at the high school or college level, or then when he joined the professional ranks. Almost as much experience as Derek James has been alive. Derek trying to show off that he's got some experience there. But James, the important part of that sentiment on the flip side is that Brandon Groom, for as long as Derek James has been alive, has also been taking copious amounts of punishment inside the ring. Copious amounts of punishment. It adds up on your body. And Derek James is trying to find what is that weak spot on Brandon Groom. The man's built like a Greek god, but everyone has their weak link. What is Groom's weak link? That is what Derek James has to find in this contest, sending Groom off. Groom cartwheeling through, showing anything Derek James can do, Brandon Groom can do better. It only makes sense, James. Of course, Derek James learned everything that he knows from Brandon Groom. The power of Brandon Groom on full display. Dragging Derek James out of the corner. Derek Groom quickly back, trying to create that separation once again. Brandon Groom having none of it. Now he's out in Mike Andrews' face. Mike Andrews backing up, saying, I had no part of it. Leave me alone. It's a smart strategy if you're Mike Andrews. Entering the ring. His eye on Derek James as they lock up again. Keep in mind, folks, no time limit applied to this matchup by the official official Brent Wall. These two men truly can take as much time as they really want to for whatever point they're trying to prove here. Derek James, like we mentioned in the past, trying to showcase that he is capable of overcoming the man who brought him to the dance, that brought him to the game. And it very well may take all night with two evenly matched competitors into the cover here. Only a two count for Derek James on Brandon Groom. Brandon Groom right back into the arm bar though. As I said, with experience like this, it may take all night. 
for the slightest mistake to allow one of these two to capitalize and get the win into the cover here, almost a, a similar to a backslide there. We're targeting that left knee of Derek James now. Derek James fighting back, trying to create separation. Room not letting him have it though. James out of the way, the big body splash in the corner. In the favor with a chop. Trying that double underhook. Room got him, belly to belly, suplex overhead. Reminiscent of that Greco-Roman styling that Brandon Groom has perfected throughout his career. Derek James didn't even see it coming. You mentioned Groom's background as an amateur wrestler starting through high school and college. Now a lot of those skills still applied, seeing some martial arts-like kicks here. Pro wrestling truly the blending of styles. Brandon Groom putting that on full display. Cheers of this crowd and trying to convert them into energy to continue this battle. Just easily picking Derek James off his, up onto his shoulders. Excuse me, Derek James fighting his way free. Brandon Grimm's got him up in that military press, wow. taking him on a show of the American Legion here. The crowd is going wild. Mohawk post 308. Love them some Brandon Groom into a modified cover here. Very smart, putting all that weight on Derek James's shoulders. It looks like he was driving that knee directly into the pectoral muscle of Derek James. Every bit of weight you can place on those shoulders, it's going to lead you closer to a victory, James. No doubt about it. Every inch of pressure could be what makes the difference. We're now with this. Looks like a key lock, perhaps. Over the shoulder of Derek James. Derek James fighting three, trying to hit that stunner. Drew maintaining control. Really losing it after that second knee strike there. Derek James subverting expectations there, going for that drop toe hold. Missing on the follow up elbow, though. Speaking of follow up, Brandon Groom's going to have to find a way to make that happen, but. Doesn't seem like that's going to be anytime soon, James. Not after an introduction of the ropes and the windpipe. All the air in the throat of Brandon Groom driven out. Looks like Derek James might have him, but he's not willing to pin him. You have to put your weight on the man to pin him, Derek. I know you're confident. I know you feel like you have Brandon Groom beat, but now is not the time for showboating. When you've been to the mountaintop like Derek James has, when you've experienced the glory that Derek James has, it's only right to want to show off a little bit, but you do have to focus on the big Focusing on the victory is what Derek James is doing. A big single leg drop kick there, sink room to the outside. He's got to try to recover. Let's see Derek James catching his breath, settling down, finding his rhythm. The game is in his hands now. Mike Andrews trying to keep Derek focused, keep him on goal, catch your breath while you can, but get right back on top of Groove. And that is what we're seeing now. A bit of King of the Mountain being played by Derek James. It's almost like Derek James is completely okay with the idea of walking away with a count out victory. Nothing on the line here, no championships. That sure shot opportunity isn't up. James sitting down into that in the tip. Groom went for a sunset flip. Here James just sat down and started raining punches down on the head of Brandon Groom. Well, a very rare misstep from Brandon Groom led to the advantage being taken by Derek James. That's just the, the mindset that this young kid has. Derek James always learning. We say Brandon Groom is his main trainer, of course. James has spent years now traveling all across the U.S., learning from as many different sources as he can. So who knows, perhaps Derek James has gathered a skill set that allows him to defeat Brandon Groom. There's potential for anything here tonight, but we have never seen a more focused and determined, defiant Derek James. Throughout his entire time here at Unified Wrestling Oklahoma, I doubt that changes anytime soon. He's got him hooked, Walker. Oh, into a small package. Only a two count for Brandon Groom, showing that resourcefulness, though. James right back on the attack, though. Attack of dogs. He just stays on top of Brandon Groom. He was going for that.
that military press once again. Derek James bringing him into a small package. Only a two count though. For backslide attempt, reversed into a DDT by Derek James. Brandon Groove is in trouble. Into the cover. Only two. You see Mike Andrews getting frustrated. Derek James getting frustrated. Walker, what does Derek have to do to keep those nerves at bay in a moment like this? Exactly what he's doing right now. Derek James doesn't have any nerves in the situation he's in right now because he's on the offensive. He's on the attack. When you're on the attack, it's easy to keep things going in your favor. Derek James slowing the pace down now, acting like an anaconda, using those legs to try to choke the life out of Brandon Groom. Way out. Slide scissors being applied by Derek James. And this just goes to show you that even some of the best of the best in the state of Oklahoma are going to struggle whenever they step into the ring with a man like Derek James. But wait a minute. Shifting his weight over there, hitting Derek James only for a two count, though. Derek James going for that Samoan drop. Groom sends him up. Big scoop slam by the Brideless Groom. Brandon Groom, he's got to stay on top of Derrick James, though. He's been feeling his wrath for the majority of this contest. Can Brandon Groom fire up? That's what we're seeing. The straps are coming down. Uh, Groom can't start looking for wedding venues too soon. He's got to stay on top of Derrick James here. Oh. Big discus lariat turns him inside out. Now that right hand sealed with a kiss. Sign sealed, delivered. Derek James, it's yours. Now corner to corner by Brandon Groom goes Derek James. Out, tilt a whirl, backbreaker. James's spine has been realigned courtesy of the Brideless Groom. What's Brandon Groom got in mind here? Double chicken wing. Looks, it looks like that's what he's going for. Never know what Brandon Groom is going for. Finally innovative. What are we seeing here? The fans at the American Legion are counting along here. The beats of Brandon Groom rain down. Floating over. He caught Derek James. Once again, that spine and back of Derrick James have got to be feeling the pain after a combination like that. Groom into the cover, two, and only two for the Brideless Groom. And Groom has got to stay on top of Derrick though. This is not the moment to try to catch your breath, Walker. It's definitely not the moment. Groom has to keep the momentum running, has to keep the engine firing on all cylinders. James trying to uh, cause a sputter in that engine. Brandon Groom having none of it, up and over. James, though, taking that arm across the top rope. Now he's got it in between the middle to separate the shoulder of Brandon Groom, perhaps. We have seen the target. James up on that middle rope, diving out with a knee to that same shoulder. Gotta watch the shoulder now. That seemingly, that target has been placed by Derek James. The shoulder and neck of Brandon Groom. It's a, it's a very interesting concept. Derek James very well could have knocked out Brandon Groom with that shot and, and, and woke him up by placing him in the submission hold. Nevertheless, Derek James still has a lot further to go if he wants to put Groom down. Nice and light grip applied around the throat. You see Groom trying to fight anything into a cover here. That is what Groom has been doing his best work right here when he finds ways to shift his weight and create a pinning predicament for Derek James. Derek James now with a single leg crab. Groom trying to grab that ankle, possibly pick it and roll through. 
might be his only escape, but you see Derek James really wrenching on at that ankle now. The ankle, the knee, the entire lower leg of Brandon Groom has to be in pain. Transitioning into an STF, but he got caught during the transition, did Derek James. I don't think that was too smart of a move for Derek James. He had Brandon Groom exactly where he wanted him, but wait, look at this. The ultimate game of leverage being played within those three ropes. Each leveraging each other's body weight into position. Comes off the ropes now. Groom's got him up. And down goes Derek James. Big spin outside slam by Brandon Groom. Into the cover now. Took a moment to celebrate. And that might have cost him there only a two. Watching Brandon Groom come out here, and he's having a lot of fun here tonight, and I'm happy that he's enjoying himself, James. At a certain point, you have to start thinking more about your win-loss record here in UWO, especially if you want to be a, a champion in UWO, the way Derek James is right. And what beating a former UWO champion would mean for the record of Brandon Groom, it would be phenomenal. And for Derek James, it would be a hell of a way to solidify yourself working back up the rankings but somebody has got to pick up the victory here. Showboating will only get you so far. It comes down to wins and losses when who's going to hit that pay window. Big spinning back fist there from Brandon Groom. James trying to damage that hand, that powerful left hand. Going for the Insiguri and missed. Did Derek James, Brandon Groom, going for a gut, uh, a waist lock there, going for a gut wrench suplex. Spin out power bomb. Only two for Brandon Groom. How close can you get without sealing the deal? That has got to be what Brandon Groom is asking himself right now, Walker. Well, I think there's a reason that both of these men are off their feet at this very point in the matchup. Brandon Groom and Derek James have given it all. They're putting it all on the line here tonight. The question still remains, who will walk away the victor? Our opening contest here at UWO Parade of Champions. Things are just getting started. We have two huge Crow Cup matches coming up. We've got Team Red James versus the Cana uh, Team Canadian Red Devil, excuse me. And Derek James has a rolling arm bar now on Brandon Groom. Brandon Groom's got those hands locked together though. Derek James can't get full extension. And I think that extension's finally been found, or at least it's very close. It was temporarily reached. Groom managed to get his fingers back locked together. We'll look back through into another pinning combination. That's One, be it. two, only two for Brandon Groom. We've seen a highly technical contest. Could this be it right here? Back bridge. One, two. Only two with the natural bridge by Brandon Groom showing off that core strength. Unnatural back athleticism. Slide. Two count there on the backslide. The two counts just keep coming. But eventually they have to come to an end. Just a matter of time. Derek James missing that body splash. Float over into the cradle there. Two count for Groom. Spinning forearm by Derek James. That made contact. You see Groom. He registered it. He knew it was there. It may or may not have dimmed the lights just a little bit. Now he's trying to find Derek James in the dark. Lit up with those shots. Big chops in the corner. Groom going up. Excuse me, Derek James going up. and forth in the corner. Derek James fighting to stay alive on that middle rope. Groom trying to prevent whatever aerial offense Derek James has in mind. Groom is trying to carve a hole into the chest of Derek James here. Derek James might be suffering from some pectus excavatum after this one. He's got him up, electric chair. Derek James rolls through though, into the cover. And two count. Groom gets two of his own with the reversal. 
These two know each other in and out, Stewart. They definitely do, but Derek James couldn't have expected this one. Wait, uh, Marvelous Mike Andrews trying to find some involvement here. He was trying to find those feet of Brandon Groom. He did allow Derek James to get a sunset flip. And Groom stacking his own body on top of Derek James has found a way to get the win. Your winner via pinfall, Brandon Groom. Ready for some team warfare in Tulsa, Walker. We have Team Red James, the foreman. Red James leading the, uh, the psychotic messengers, excuse me. Malachi, the savior of suffering, Tank Bryson. Of course, they are accompanied to ringside by the foreman's right hand man, Chelsea Stackhouse. They are taking on a, a, another red team tonight, but a team wearing the red of a little bit north of the border. Let's see who's making up team Canadian Red Devil. The Canadian Red Devil. Rockin' Ronnie Morton, the RDW Brass Knuckles champion, and Andrew Phoenix. Little six-man tag action here in Tulsa on a Saturday night. Action already starting. Canadian Red Devil all over. Red James rockin' Ronnie Morton on Tank Bryson and Malachi trying to stay out of the way, getting a shot in on Rockin' Ronnie Morton where he can. It was very obvious from the get-go, as soon as you see the individuals involved in this matchup, and it was going to be chaotic from the start, but I didn't expect it to start off that way. Three of the wildest, loudest individuals in UWO 
uh, representing their respective teams, all six of them clashing at the center of the squared circle. That is what it is all about. Well, there's been a, a war of words, as one could say, between C Team CRD and Team Red James. We're still the two captains of the respective teams, and the Canadian Red Devil and Red James. These two men, just simply put, do not like each other's presence, James. A little bit of jaw jacking back and forth on social media led to this contest here. Red James already calling in his reinforcements, bringing in the savior of suffering, Malachi. Canadian Red Devil on the receiving end there of a flurry of forearms. Now he has the forearm of Malachi controlled. The atomic drop there, dropping uh, the, uh, the proverbial family jewels of Malachi across the knee. Malachi has to be feeling that one, obviously. He returns the favor. Right back on top of CRD. You can't turn your back on this team for a minute. I know Red James likes to talk, but you give Malachi an inch and he will capitalize on it. Red James now, Red James now capitalizing on the opportunity Malachi gave him. James, I don't know if this is actually allowed. We have red on red violence here tonight in Tulsa. Both teams a little red this evening. Team Red James, Team Canadian Red Devil. One thing is for sure though, these perhaps might be the most six different personalities that you could pick from this locker room, but they all come together under one thing, either their uh, dislike of uh, Red James or their love for Red James. One thing is for sure, everybody has strong feelings about each other in this match, especially these two. Rock and Ronnie Morton taking it to Red James. These two have been going back and forth for months now. It's revolving that RDW Brass Knuckles Championship, which currently belongs around the waist of Rock and Ronnie Morton. But don't forget how he obtained that championship, defeating Red James in a full bodysuit and mask. We were dubbing him the, the Black Scorpion, James. The Black Scorpion came out of hiding to win that Brass Knuckles title. Red James said Rock and Ronnie Morton would never get a shot, but the Black Scorpion did and won and revealed himself to be Ronnie Morton who's taking it to Tank Bryson here. Going for that big scoop slam, got him up and over. Right down on the shoulders, elbow drop there to the chest. Tank Bryson now being covered, only a two count though before he kicked out. Ronnie Morton's gonna have to keep applying this pressure. Team CRD for that measure, and we'll have to keep applying the pressure on Tank Bryson. We got a lot of red in this matchup here, James, whether it's Canadian Red Devil or Tank Bryson, but here's Andrew Phoenix. This is one of the most beloved members of the UWO roster. You've seen him uh, navigate the backstage area in the past. Everyone's always trying to shake his hand. Everyone's always trying to talk this man up for a good time. And now he's light Tank Bryson up. A series of chops, a punch to the head. Tank Bryson having none of it though, returning a headbutt to Andrew Phoenix. Andrew now not where he wants to be, back in the corner with Malachi and Red James, but CRD making the save. Fighting off Red James and Malachi, trying to get Andrew Phoenix back to his corner. CRD now, the legal man, I guess. Tank Bryson up. Red James out of the corner, delivering a shot of his own. Well, this is a matchup that's very hard for anyone to keep up with, whether it's here at the broadcast booth or even in, inside the ring itself. James. Whether it's Martin Justice or us up here at the commentary booth, chaos has ensued. Ronnie Morton trying to make the save for the Canadian Red Devil now being escorted back to his corner courtesy of referee Martin Justice. Tank Bryson and Red James now taking over on the Canadian Red Devil. 
your favorite anti-hero being brutalized by the foreman. Well, there, there's a massive experience differential between these two men. Red James, less than two years into active competition. Meanwhile, I remember going to independent professional wrestling shows in the state of Oklahoma myself as a child, watching Canadian Red Devil win championships all across the state. Medicine Hat, Alberta native, a long time staple of the Oklahoma wrestling scene. That is for sure. But that leg drop, nowhere to be found, just like Hannah Alberta on a map. Canadian Red Devil. Got Red James hooked. Atomic drop for him. Sends him back to the corner. Red James out. CRD's got him hooked up. And an inverted one. One for the front, one for the back, one for the road. I believe uh, Stu Hart taught him that one at the wrestling dungeon himself, James. Perhaps he did. Uh, never uh, gotten close to our favorite resident anti-hero to ask him about his training regimens. But perhaps that came right out of the art dungeon. But those fists are coming right from the end of the forearm of CRD. And now Red James being sent to the outside. Things can only become more chaotic as this matchup goes on. One thing that we've noticed throughout this entire time, oh, Chelsea Stackhouse being pushed out of the way, and now... Don't try to get in the way of the Canadian Red Devil. When he sees his target, he wants a piece of Red James, and they will fight all across this building to do so. They will, they will fight so far away that it's going to be completely out of our field of vision as we're currently experiencing. And now we're seeing them. CRD and Red James going to war here tonight in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Red James trying to crawl across that table to find some reprieve. CRD letting him have none of it. Big chop from on top of the chair. Down across the chest of Red James. Red James trying to find reprieve in anyone, even a tag to Malachi. That'll do. Don't know if CRD didn't see it, but he was so focused on Red James. Malachi was able to take back over. Control now firmly in team Red James. A grasp here. With the psychotic messengers in Malachi and Tank Bryson have been tag team champion all across the state of Oklahoma. Currently reigning as multi multi company tag team champion, highly uh, highly acclaimed by the psychotic messengers. Red right? James might have made a great decision in choosing these two to team alongside him tonight. When you're trying to find a tag team, there's none better in Oklahoma than the Psychotic Messengers, former AIWF World Tag Team Champions, Empire Pro Tag Team Champions, UWO. Uh, they've had plenty of successful tag team matches here. We don't have a championship, but one could only assume the Psychotic Messengers dominance would carry on. Red James here getting the opportunity to square off with Rock and Ronnie Morton, but bringing Malachi in to handle things. Red James not wanting a piece of Rock and Ronnie Morton, as you mentioned earlier, Walker. Their feud has been long and ongoing here in UWO. Malachi driving those shoulders into Rock and Ronnie Morton in the corner. Red James and the foreman's right-hand man, Chelsea Stackhouse on the outside, watching, enjoying, as Tank Bryson's in now to continue the punishment. You know, and throughout all the chaos that we've seen in this match, oh, DDT! Right on top of the head for Rockin' Ronnie Morton. Beautiful move by Tank Bryson, now bringing in Red James, now that Ronnie Morton's in a desperate position. James calling Ronnie Morton, rocking chair Ronnie Morton. Of course, that brings the fire out of Ronnie. Tag in there, I believe the Canadian Red Devil may or may not be the legal man here. Ronnie Morton is not done with Red James though. This is a personal matter. These two deeply dislike each other and they're trading punches. Now CRD taking advantage of being the legal man and pinning Red James. Red James has been eliminated from his own team. 
with 20 plus years of experience, CRD manages to outsmart that of Red James. But Tank Bryson, not as much experience as CRD tends to have. However, right on the attack here, very smart maneuvers here from Tank Bryson. What he lacks in experience, he makes up for in intensity into the cover. Only a two count for Tank Bryson, but this relative newcomer, a trainee of the legendary Nick Dinsmore, known to some as Eugene, known to others as the longest reigning OVW heavyweight champion in history. When you come from a pedigree like that, it's no surprise that just a couple of years into his career, we're seeing such impressive things from Tank Bryson. And it's not shocking whatsoever that Tank Bryson is an excellent tag team competitor because his, his mentor, his trainer that you just mentioned, Nick Dismore, former World Wrestling Entertainment World Tag Team Champion in his own right. Very experienced in tag team competition, just like Tank Bryson. But nothing prepares you for Andrew Phoenix, the fire of the Phoenix, coming out here. Close lines on close lines for Tank Bryson, but I would say keep your eyes on Chelsea Stackhouse, but it looks like that's exactly what Andrew Phoenix is doing. Into the roll up, Andrew Phoenix has been eliminated. We're all tied up two and two. I know Chelsea Stackhouse doesn't exactly mind being the center of attention when it comes to being at ringside, but I think Andrew Phoenix might have taken it a little too far. Look out for Ronnie Morton, Malachi. What, what is going on here? And the assist from the ropes. Down goes Rockin' Ronnie Morton. Two on one. CRD is fighting by himself. The Canadian Red Devil has got to dig deep. He's got a GMSI. He has got to pick up the win for his team by himself. GMSI. I'll tell you later. Red Devil here, he's got Malachi's foot on the ropes. He's standing on that ankle and knee, dropping all his weight. That knee, the MCL, the PCL, all of those ligaments in the knee being brutalized by the Red Devil. ERD now trying to apply a figure four. He's got it locked in. That tension being to the knees of Malachi, trying to make that tag to Tank Bryson. Perhaps his only hope, a tag or reaching the ropes. He's able to reach the ropes, not his own partner though. Malachi in a very dangerous position here, Walker, into the cover. Tank Bryson in to break it up though. You mentioned it yourself, dangerous indeed. Everyone involved in this matchup, from inside the ring to outside the ring, are incredibly dangerous. risk takers, absolute monsters, whatever you want to call them. Took out there for CRD. He managed to shift his weight, take take Bryson off balance, prevent that slam, and capitalize into somewhat of an offensive maneuver. Now the crossface being applied, a Canadian favorite. The Red Devils got it cinched in. Malachi though with a kick to the ribs, breaking up that crossface. Well, that's gonna, it's not gonna sit well with the Canadian Red Devil whatsoever. Malachi looking to maintain the attack here. Can he do so, James? And that sleeper hold by CRD. Malachi's fading. He's already in a seated position. That gives Canadian Red Devil all the positioning to put his body weight on the neck and throw. Chelsea Stackhouse calling over our referee to check on Tank Bryson. Red James now with a hammer to the head of the Canadian Red Devil. Repeated shots with our bell hammer. I, I know we said the foreman always gets the job done, but not the construction job. What is going on here? And that is why Chelsea Stackhouse is referred as the foreman's right-hand man. Providing the distraction, allowing Red James to use that bell hammer to secure the win for the psychotic messengers and the entirety of Team Red James.
think Frankie Lee might need to pick another time to introduce himself. The whole Bo show has arrived, and uh, I have a feeling uh, Frankie Lee's being uh, interrupted here and preempted by the Bo show. You're right about that one, James. A very animalistic competitor back in the squared circle tonight. It's been a long time since we've seen Bo Benton hit the ring here in the state of Oklahoma, a former RDW Ironman champion. Tonight is the night where Bo Benton makes his in-ring return, but he has a hell of a contender here in Frankie Lee. Frankie Lee's been trying to build a lot of momentum as of recent. He hasn't been doing as well as he wishes that he has. However, every single night he's been coming in, he's been showing out. We're gonna see what the kids got. Frankie Lee looking for an impressive win here, originally scheduled to face the Wolf of War. Ben stepping up to answer the challenge. The fabulous Frankie Lee taking on the Bow Show. Got to here. Got to point out the presence right now at ringside of one Scarlet Fever. Sickeningly beautiful, James. I know you're well aware. Indeed, Scarlet Fever always a presence at ringside when the honorable three are here. Frankie Lee down with a big forearm courtesy of Bo Benton. Bo Benton setting himself in the corner, readying himself once again. Frankie Lee trying to figure out just how he has been injured already. Scarlet Fever trying to introduce herself into this match only to allow Frankie Lee to regain control. Stomping now square on the lower back of Bo Benton. And the cover only getting two. Now Frankie Lee is an incredibly intense entering competitor. Very short time that he spent inside the squared circle, inside uh, in-ring competitive competition, if you will, James. Frankie Lee's been doing a lot to try and make a name for himself in UWO. Tonight might be the stepping stone that he's been looking for in Bo Ben. Very short period of time he's been here, but a major statement has been made by Frankie Lee so far. And a win over Bo Ben would further put the UWO locker room on notice. Trying to pick Bo up here, set him up in the center of the ring, delivering one of those kicks square to the chest. And a two count for Frankie Lee. Bo Benton back up, immediately getting his shoulders off the mat to prevent any further pinfall attempts. He trying to show off Bo Benton to these cameras, Bo having none of it. He says the Bo Show is always live in Tulsa. Frankie Lee, Bo down, coming off those ropes. Big Sinton laying his hips across uh, Bo Benton, excuse me, Bo Benton finding the ropes there on a one count. Walker, Frankie has been all over Bo Benton at the start of this contest, but what does it gonna take for him to keep Bo down in the center of the ring? Well, you notice that Frankie Lee is coming to this matchup with an incredible strategy. The targeting of the left knee for Frankie, Frankie Lee onto Bo Benton, trying to uh, maintain some form of cutting down the larger vertical base Bo Benton has. If he can maintain that, he's gonna walk away with a victory tonight. When you have a taller opponent, you have to segment them out, and that's what Frankie's been trying to do, but Bo's still got a phenomenal base, and he's throwing at these arm drags. He's got Frankie Lee flying. Look at this, Bo Benton just sending Frankie Lee almost halfway across the ring, James Southern. That was a hip toss with some height. Frankie Lee trying to consult with Scarlet Fever as he pulls himself back up. Well, I don't know how much back and forth those two are having. Frankie Lee might be out on his feet right now. Frankie Lee, these days, Bo's got him up. But it looks like Frankie was just playing possum, raining those elbows down on Bo Ben. Very smart strategy here. Make Bo think you're more hurt than you actually are. Big rotating suplex there into the cover. Lee two count 
out there. Bo Benton barely getting that shoulder up after that big swinging suplex. All that additional momentum driven down. Freaky going for a spin kick, got caught. Spin out power bomb by Bo Benton. And the three count, a dominant win for Bo Benton. Planning Frankie Lee square in the dirt in the center of the ring. Well, think about this, James. What a victory that this is for Bo Benton, not only here tonight, but also in his UWO return. I can't wait to see what more comes for the future of the Bo Show. Hell of a way to come back for Bo Benton. And it's time for Frankie Lee to regroup. at American Legion Mohawk Post 308 in Tulsa tonight. Mr. Nasty is in the building. Baton Rouge's finest is in the house tonight, but he is taking on a man he is very familiar with. Let's hear from the pimp. heard Mr. Nasty Walker, a, a, a pimp's stuff has been stolen. How do you steal a pimp's gear? Now, apparently Tommy Dean has found a way and oh my God, what is this? Did, did that just say Mas Mr. Nasty Dean? Well, obviously Tommy Dean's had some plans for quite some time, he even managed to inform our production crew of his new moniker, Mr. Nast Dean is in the building. Mr. Nast Dean, Tommy Dean, obviously wearing Mr. Nasty's stolen garb. This is a disgrace, Walker. Now, now let's not beat around the bush here, James. Mr. Nast Dean 
It's going to be a hard one to continue saying throughout the night. Mr. Nastine is, is stolen from one of the greatest entrepreneurial minds and philanthropic individuals in the state of Oklahoma. And Mr. Nastine, how do you steal from a man who has given so much to the world? That is a question for you to ask this Tommy Dean, Mr. Nast Dean, whatever you want to call him. I call it disrespect for a pimp is what I call it. And it will not be taken, I can assure you of that. Mr. Nasty is absolutely livid in the corner. He is fuming over this. I see, I see a scarf, I see a glove, I see a chain. Just how much has Tommy Dean stolen from this man? Well, James, I, I gotta be honest with you. I'm not sure which Mr. Nasty you're talking about. You said that he was looking disgusted in the corner and they're, they're both looking pretty unhappy with the other one right now. I refuse to refer to him as Mr. Nasty Dean. Tommy Dean is making a fool of a pimp's profession right now and that cannot stand. There are many hardworking pimps out there in America that would take serious offense to the mockery that is being played by Tommy Dean. I know the American Legion Mohawk uh, has been a massive enjoyer of the services for one Mr. Nasty. I don't really know what, uh, what Mr. Nasty really provides. Is it the same service? Is it? You know, and a little known fact about Mr. Nasty, he is a member of a union, believe it or not, the ALP, the American Legion of Pimps. Uh, he has been a representative as well as a board member of the ALP. Uh, very philanthropic, as you mentioned, very involved in his profession is one of Mr. Nasty. And Tommy Dean is making a mockery of Mr. Nasty's line of work. Yeah, I gotta be honest with you, James. I'm starting to struggle to tell the two of these men apart. I think that I think we're gonna have to I, I don't know what we're gonna have to do. We're gonna have to find some way to 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 showcase who is who in this matchup. And Tommy Dean just said he's gonna be leaving the scarf on. I guess you can, uh, since you're dealing with this batch of confusion, uh, Tommy Dean, Mr. Nast Dean, in the uh, scarf, and the, the real Mr. Nasty unscarfed, I guess. I guess it's, it's better than a wave cap, but it's, it will definitely get the job done, James. Not sure about that. Tommy Dean might need to be rocking some waves in the near future if Mr. Nasty does not slap those waves into the hair tonight at the American Legion Post 308. Mr. Nasty immediately here with the waist lock on Tommy Dean. Tommy Dean taking him on a soul ride, delivering those hips back. delivering that scarf and kneeing it off the head of Mr. Nasty. That was the force that shot came in with. You know, Tommy Dean's starting to look a lot more like one of Mr. Nasty's employees than an, than an employer. Mr. Nasty coming off those ropes. Full speed, Tommy Dean up and over, rebounding behind him, and Mr. Nasty sent flying. I, I gotta tell you, James, that's straight out of the Mr. Nasty playbook. Obviously, Mr. Nasty Dean, Tommy Dean, has been putting the work in and scouting his opponent tonight. Tommy Dean obviously paying attention, and that could come into play spades for him tonight. He's got to stay on top of Mr. Nasty, though, and it looks like that's exactly what he's looking to do with a Big right hand from downtown Tulsa all the way here to the American Legion. I haven't seen Pimp Semption like this since Oklahoma City, so we're, there's a lot going on right now, James. Oh my God, another backhand from Tommy Dean. This is not South Sheridan. You will not believe your eyes. We have two pimps here in Tulsa going back and forth. Mr. Nass Dean laying the heavy hands down. Tommy Dean full in control of this. Mr. Nasty has got to find a way to recover. But oh my lord, a pimp is on a roll. 
Now, I've never seen Mr. Nasty hit a side suplex like that. Yeah, it's an incredible snap to that. Tommy Dean, a very uh, influenced by the, the Japanese style of professional wrestling. Justice almost getting in the way there while he was checking on Mr. Nasty. Tommy Dean says, I've got this. Mr. Nasty says, I've got your beard. I happen to know that Martin Justice is a, a, a purveyor of the services for one Mr. Nasty, and I'm sure that he would definitely have great interest in this matchup. I have to question the bias of this official. Mr. Nasty now sending Tommy Dean back into the ring with that slap. Slaps are strong with this one. Taking Tommy Dean to the mat. When you've been in the pimp industry the, as long as Mr. Nasty has been throughout his career, your strikes are definitely going to be a little harder than your average Joe James, but you wouldn't know anything about that. The average pimp does indeed smack harder than the average Joe. Mr. Nasty has been confirming that to us for a number of years now. Also, strikes harder than the average Dean. Apparently so. Tommy Dean now on the receiving end of this headlock, trying to choke the air out of Tommy Dean. Mr. Nasty. We hear a chant of Tommy time. Apparently, this crowd is uh, finding great humor in the actions of one Tommy Dean. Mr. Nasty having none of it, though. his way to a vertical base. Delivering a successful shot, now a couple of them. Trying to get a series flowing here. Nasty coming back in. We saw it earlier, but not with that variation. Into the neck breaker. Only gets a two count for Nasty though. This has been a bona fide turf war since the beginning. You do not come on to Mr. Nasty's block. You do not take Mr. Nasty's clothes and try and take over his domain, especially here in Tulsa. The pimp's area is very strictly defined and Tommy Dean has walked into the yard and started walking all over the grass of Mr. Nasty. And that is not the place you want to be on the receiving end of a pissed off pimp. Raining down punches now is Mr. Nasty. Tommy Dean having to grab the hair of Mr. Nasty to put him in a precarious position. Oh, Nasty's stuck here, oh my! A pimp slap across a full moon in Tulsa. Tommy Dean trying to perhaps go for that brain buster. Pimp down! Big backhand by Mr. Nasty takes down Tommy Dean. to display Tommy Dean to all in the American Legion Mohawk Post 308 here in Tulsa. Tommy Dean returning the favor, pimp hand strong, James. says Tommy Dean. There is a power in that glove that transfers between whom swears it, and it is being used on the purveyor of Mr. Nasty. He's feeling all of it right now. He who giveth also receiveth. Mr. Nasty on the receiving end now. I've heard all about that one. Trying to reverse out of it, that big side suplex out of the corner. Tommy Dean's got to be feeling that in his neck. Trying to regain his composure. Wait a minute. Could it be time for a booty call? Tommy Dean says no. It's too early. Don't call me until after midnight. Two kick out there for Mr. Nasty. Spinning heel kick from Nasty into the cover. 
Only a two count. Nasty had that foot exactly where he wanted it, but Tommy D just isn't quite down and out yet. Slowly moving, trying to find his opponent. And Mr. Nasty trying to find something in the corner. Digging through the clothes of Tommy Dean. I believe he just called Tommy Dean a crackhead. Don't know if we can say that one on air, but nevertheless. A bit of creative liberty here by Mr. Nasty retrieving the glove. And I told you there's a transferable power inside that glove. And a, and a fully powered Mr. Nasty is not a man I want to be inside the ring with. I think it's all thrusters go at this point. Tommy Dean fighting for his life with a series of strikes. Shots to the head, rocking Mr. Nasty. A kick to the knee brings him down. Big DET. Tommy Dean's feeling it. This might be his moment, Walker. Riding the wave of momentum is Tommy Dean. But how nasty, how down and dirty can he get over the top rope? Riding the momentum and riding the lightning right over the top and to the outside. Tommy Dean has Mr. Nasty down. This crowd's rallying behind him. Can he stay in control? Nasty back in the ropes. Tommy Dean right in after him. You heard it, Mr. Tommy Times coming up. Going for that double underhook. Mr. Nasty having none of it. Tommy Dean, big spinning clothesline there. Center of the ring. Mr. Nasty already back up to his hands and knees. Wait a minute, uh, Tommy Dean has a phone as well. He's placing a late night call. The booty call. Successful, it is ringing, it is going through and the head of Mr. Nasty is ringing. We have a pimp in distress in Tulsa. Going for that big shot with the chain. Dean now, what is, oh my God. Cross jacket pile driver. Now Martin Justice sees that chain. Tommy Dean's got it in his hand. He's having to argue. The official thinks he knocked out Mr. Nasty with that chain. Mr. Nasty, though, taking advantage of the opportunity with a low blow. Rotates Tommy through. Pimp down. One, two, three. Your winner, Mr. Nasty. Well, James, I gotta tell you, a low blow like that, that's one way to put a competitor out of business. What a victory here tonight for Mr. Nasty. Business might be a little slow for Tommy Dean, but things are going well for Mr. Nasty, reclaiming his property and reclaiming his crown as King of Pimp. Wait a minute, what is, Tommy Dean? Tommy Dean is just taking a shot at Mr. Nasty. And a shot from the cane. Breaking that cane in half across the head of Mr. Nasty. Tommy Dean might not have walked out with the win, but he's walking out with pride on his side. And the end of the pimp's cane came down. Came down. It's not the only thing that's down. I think the market is crashing here. The economy's crashing. Now that Mr. Nasty very well could be out of business, he's caneless. He's caneless, James. A huge industry leader here in Tulsa, as specifically East Tulsa, is one Mr. Nasty. But nonetheless, 
Tommy Dean, not your winner, but he is the one walking out, standing tall. And is he, is he stealing Mr. Nasty's things back? All right, Tommy Dean making off with Mr. Nasty's gear. What a night it has been, Walker. It's been a hell of a night so far, and we have even more action coming up next. accompanied by a marvelous Mike Andrews. These fans in Tulsa letting their feelings be known. Leo always the more respectful one. Mike, well, he's Mike Andrews. I guess that's all we can say about him, Walker. Yeah, that's all I would have to say. My mother always taught me that if I don't have anything nice to say that I should shut my mouth, and that is exactly why I do broadcast commentary. The inability to shut the mouth and the inability to shake hands. That's right up Mike Andrews' way. You see him there trying to fight the fans here at the American Legion. East Tulsa might not be the place I'd be looking to pick a fight, Walker, but Mike Andrews is scared of no man, no woman, and not afraid of most buildings. Go Fox. The battle born entering this Crow Cup semifinal contest. Deciding who will move on. The winner of this match, of course, will go on to face Ricky Wingrave, who defeated Malik Mayfield to advance in this tournament. Final matchup contest going on here. Adrian Vega. These two, no strangers to each other. Of course, Adrian Vega and Leo Fox trained together at the NCWO Wrestling Academy underneath Stryker, the man who is serving as special guest referee tonight. And, and that's what makes Stryker's appearance so special here. But also, not to mention, there is a, a notable history between Adrian Vega and Leo Fox. Uh, Adrian Vega believes that Leo Fox has gotten underhanded victories, and, well, Leo Fox believes that his victories have been completely justified in the past. 
Tonight we have an unbiased official in striker to call it right down the line, but the question still remains, James. Does there happen to be any bias within Stryker? I mean, he's been a notable amount of time training both of these two men. Uh, who's to say that there's not one that he likes a little bit more than that? At the end of the day, that's what it comes down to. A win is a win, but Stryker is here to try to call it down the middle. But as you said, who, what man is truly impartial? And that is what we're going to see here tonight. In fact, uh, one of the last times we were here in Tulsa, we saw Leo Fox square off against Stryker. A phenomenal contest they had, a teacher versus student moment, a great learning opportunity for Battleborn Leo Fox. And now tonight taking on a, a graduate of his same class in Adrian Vega. Well, Stryker's also stepped into the ring with Adrian Vega in singles competition back in March of last year, Empire Pro Wrestling in Oklahoma City. These two men faced off for the EPW All-American Championship, and Stryker ended up walking away with the victory. Leo Fox, you know, he had a very similar result within his matchup as well with Stryker. Stryker's felt both of these men out. He knows exactly what the game plan is for Adrian and for Leo. The plus year veteran of the sport is Stryker. He knows what both of these men bring to the table, and that is exactly why he is the man in there in the stripes, calling it right down the middle, trying to help decide who the better of these two uh, just intense rivals of the same graduating class. They're incredibly good friends. They love each other like brothers. But who do you fight more than your brothers, Walker? Well, here's the notable factor in this matchup. When Leo Fox, just over a year ago, faced off against Stryker in this very building, in this very ring for Unified Wrestling Oklahoma, Marvelous Mike Andrews was not stalking around ringside. Mike Andrews was sitting next to me in the broadcast booth. Now, Andrews is playing a little bit of a different role in the career of Leo Fox. He's carrying him to championship victories. And you can't argue the success for singles championships across the state of Oklahoma. Leo Fox has been on a dominant run the past six to eight months, and a lot of that can be contributed to the actions of Marvelous Mike Andrews. In, in fact, Leo Fox is your current reigning and defending RDW Ironman champion, but wait, hold on a minute. Cover. Only a one count there by Stryker. And Fox stated that uh, in a social media video, we saw Fox say that he was not going to be carrying the RDW Ironman Championship to ringside tonight because that's not what it's about. Non-title competition. It's all about advancing in the UWO Crow Cup. The Crow Cup in its second year. Uh, as we mentioned, uh, Ricky Wingrave already having advanced over Malik Mayfield. Uh, the winner of this contest will go on to face Ricky in uh, the semifinals. And a, and a very notable fact, James, the first ever winner of the UWO Crow Cup, none other than Stryker, the man who was officiating this contest between Vega and Fox. All the more interesting, all roads lead to the Crow Cup. Every single year, the most important part of the UWO schedule. Also coming up tonight, we have the UWO champion, Chris Morrison, taking on the murder man, Colt Kilbane. That's going to be our main event tonight, and that is going to be our next quarterfinal matchup. The winner of that match will go on to face the winner of Red James versus Cappuccino Jones. Coming up at our next event. Excited to talk about the optics of that upcoming matchup, as well as our main event as soon as we get to it. But right now for Leo Fox and Adrian Vega, not only do they have to worry about themselves, not only do they have to focus on winning this matchup, but as you mentioned, the winner of this match will go on to face Ricky Wingrave. Both of these men have stepped in the ring in the past with Ricky Wingrave, but it's all about making it to the finals of the UWO Crow Cup. Familiar opponents, unfamiliar situations competing for that Crow Cup. That's what it's all about. See Stryker there checking in the hand of Leo Fox while Mike Andrews goes to work. Leo Fox perhaps knowing a little more this go around about how to manipulate the referee playing that human game of chess. Mega trying to fight back here. Leo Fox having none of it. 
a year ago when Leo Fox and Stryker faced off inside this very ring in Tulsa, Oklahoma. We saw a very different Leo Fox, but not only has Fox improved in his game, hold on a minute, the cover. Only a two count. Leo Fox getting closer there each time, but not quite enough. But, but Fox has also gotten meaner. He's gotten more intense. That's an aggression that's been instilled in him by the Marvelous One. Andrews getting in that psyche of Leo Fox, finding that intens intensity, cranking up the amplitude. Now Leo Fox trying to attack that left arm. A full-blown assault on the arm is what Leo Fox uh, tries to initiate. Shades of the old Anderson uh, tag team. I mean, once Leo Fox cinches up on that arm, it's over, but it looks like his knee might be given out on him. That right knee of Leo Fox has given him issues over a number of years. Now it looks like Adrian Vega is going to both knees here. Can't fall Adrian Vega for a strategy like that. Look at the torque being applied. That's not a tap you see on your screen, folks. That is the writhing of agony that Leo Fox is feeling. That toe hold, the spinning toe hold. Shades of NWA champion Terry Funk. Just cinching up, twisting that ankle, twisting the toes, causing the manipulation of those joints. Leo Fox having to kick his way free there, using all his force, not only to kick free, but then drive that big ax handle into Adrian Vega. Cover now by Leo. Fox only getting two there. Right back to that left arm though. Once Leo Fox sets his target, he is locked on like a homing missile. Jamaica trying to fight to a vertical base here. As long as Leo Fox is standing over him, it's not a fair fight. All the eyes are on this matchup right now between Fox and Vega. One of those eyes being that of Ricky Wingrave. One of these men are gonna have to go on to face Ricky Wingrave in our semifinals of the Crow Cup. Looks like Vega's going for that cloverleaf here. Modified version of a Texas cloverleaf that Adrian Vega has adopted as a signature submission maneuver. Fox is fully caught in it, but that arm gave out. That left shoulder that Leo Fox has been targeting. Mike Andrews would love for nothing more than for Leo Fox to finally put Adrian Vega down for good. But Vega's not going to allow that anytime soon, James. Vega trying to find that energy. He's got Leo Fox up. Big body slam there, dead center of the ring. Vega fighting that adrenaline rush. Mike Andrews seeing Leo Fox is in trouble. And Vega has his hands on Andrews. He can't do that. Near collision there by Leo Fox and Mike Andrews. Wait, wait a minute, Stryker. Stryker interfering. Leo Fox and Mike Andrews had a hold of each other. Stryker kicked the hands of Leo Fox free. And, and it seems as though Stryker has just had enough of the, the dirty antics of lethal Leo Fox. Well, we thought Stryker was walking into this matchup without a dog in the fight, and there's all the potential that he did, but maybe his mind changed over the course of the matchup after he witnessed the way that one of his prized students was acting. Nonetheless, Adrian Vega's the one moving on. The Crow Cup continues. Ricky Wingrave versus Adrian Vega in the semifinals. Still to come, another quarterfinal matchup. Chris Morrison, Colt Kilbane, still to come in your main event at UWO Tulsa.
Wrestling fans, it's time for your upcoming championship contest where the XDWF New Gen X Championship will be on the line. What a contest that is set to be in New York's own Sir Thomas Knight prepares to try to capture the gold from the star. What do you think, Walker? James, I don't, are you doing okay over there? Here, uh, listen, I'll, I'll give you my answer and then you can give me your answer. MLP and Mini Parka are quite the pairing. Mini Parka has been a hell of a motivator for MLP over the course of the years. And in fact, MLP has a lot on the line in this matchup, not just the championship, but the winner's purse. He's got to keep that Mini Parka mouth fed. Mini Parka, the ultimate motivator. Not the gold, not the glory, but Mini Parka, the star of this contest. The XDWF title on the line, the next gen championship. Who is gonna represent the future? MLP or Sir Thomas Knight? It's very interesting to see Let's talk about the future of professional wrestling in this matchup. A very storied history for the career of Sir Thomas Knight. He's been a champion everywhere from New York all the way here in the state of Oklahoma. However, Thomas Knight has never been XCWF New Gen X champion. You know that Thomas Knight would love to teach the new kids a thing or two and win this New Gen X championship here in Tulsa. Thomas Knight known for his career as a tag team competitor, former member of the New York Connection alongside Jeff Knight. Now trying at things on his own. Uh, now, James, I know that you're typically the one asking me questions, but I got to ask you, do you think that there's a chance we see Sir Thomas Knight busting out more of a Lucha Libre styling as he steps into the ring with MLP tonight? Any can happen in pro wrestling. Sometimes you have to adapt your style to meet your opponents, and that might be what Thomas Knight has to do tonight if he wants to walk out with the gold. MLP is not a typical uh, standard American wrestling style competitor. He throws in some of that Lucha Libre, and that's exactly what Thomas Knight is gonna have to deal with if he wants to walk away the XDWF Next Gen Champion. Sir Thomas Knight, he is putting the battle in here on MLP. Looked like Mini Parker was trying to make a run in there. Can't let a man as dangerous as Mini Parker in the ring. No doubt about it, it would certainly spell the end for Thomas Knight, but he's looking real good right now. He's got MLP reeling on the outside. He needs to speed that count up. MLP's been out there for at least a 10 count. Martin Justice having none of it. He says, I'm wearing the stripes and you aren't. I think that Sir Thomas Knight, if he believes it's been a 10 count this far, his, his math might be a little bit off. However, MLP might be used to that 20 count. Perhaps a little bit of that Lucha experience on MLP's part. Sir Thomas Knight has had some experience with the stripes, so maybe that was why he was taking exception. Excuse me. Only one count. Oh, two, says our official Mark Justice. Two count for MLP there on Sir Thomas Knight. Thomas Knight now getting caught with those big left hands. Chop there, courtesy of MLP. Yeah, MLP, a former champion all across from Mexico to the state of Oklahoma. Basically covering the other half of the United States as Sir Thomas Knight hasn't been to yet. 
Thomas Knight takes the north, MLP takes the south, and we're seeing a clash here in the heartland. Well, Oklahoma it, getting a treat seeing MLP versus Sir Thomas Knight. If we're seeing history repeat itself, I've typically been a northerner myself, but nevertheless, Sir Thomas Knight, he's got what it takes to put this one down for the three. That is if MLP could manage to take a little time to get in the room. That is the key. You can't win the championship on the outside. And maybe that's exactly what the MLP's counting on. Thomas Knight has got to pin him or submit him flat in the center of the ring. It can't be done on the outside. That's that champion's advantage we talk about. Can't lose your title via some or via a disqualification or a count out, excuse me. Sir Thomas Knight is a union man, and we are going to see this northern native walk away with the championship. I just know it. Have to overcome MLP. He's taking a moment to readjust the ring skirts, but there might some more be some more adjustments being made there by MLP. Thomas Knight said you took too long. I will take advantage. Shot into the corner. Uh, MLP, a, a great in-ring wrestling veteran. He remembers the Alamo, James Southern. He was there, and he was working circles around everyone in attendance. Designated security guard for the Alamo MLP. Dropping Thomas Knight on that top rope, and now he's trying to fight anybody like it is the Battle of the Alamo. But he's got one man to fight tonight, and that man is Sir Thomas Knight. Knight there uh, receiving a kick perhaps in the basement uh, of the uh, Alamo that you just referenced there, Walker. Yeah, we don't, we don't have a, ba a lot of basements here in Oklahoma. I think the water line's a little too high. But... What's not too high is that knee of Thomas Knight being cranked around our second spinning toe hold of the night. Tributes all around to the Funker. And spinning toe hold of Oh, it creates a tremendous amount of pain across the ankle, the knee, the hip. Every joint in the leg is being manipulated. And then it can be very easily transferred over, as we're seeing right now, into the figure four. A figure four masterfully applied by MLP. He learned this against Ric Flair in Arena Mexico. Now it's being applied to one Sir Thomas Knight. Thomas Knight trying to avoid that pinning predicament there. Can't let his shoulders get flat and he's managed to reverse it. All that pressure being applied across MLP's knees and ankles now. MLP's gotta find a way to get to the ropes or a way to roll back over. He's found those ropes. Thomas Knight having to break up the hold. How much damage has been done to both men, Walker? Uh, I have to imagine a great deal of damage has been done, James. MLP and Thomas Knight have been going through the ringer, and it's all for the pride and glory of the XTWF New Gen X Championship. Oh, what a suplex. Suplex there by Thomas Knight. He's maintaining his hold. Perhaps this is Thomas Knight's uh, tribute to the Lucha stylings. Seeing, we've seen two. Could we see all three amigos? No, MLP with the schoolboy. Yeah, telling the third amigo to stay home. MLP managed to get a very good leg up there on Sir Thomas Knight, but he has to be able to capitalize on it. Got Thomas Knight down on his head and neck into that pinning predicament. But nonetheless, the match rolls on. MLP has got to keep Thomas Knight away from that championship. He feels it slipping from his grasp with every moment. This is MLP's second, excuse me, first ever defense of the XTWF New Gen X Championship. And he does not want it to be the last. Just two months into a championship reign. What a matchup we have had thus far here tonight, James. 
It hasn't been a wild one for the gold. Thomas Knight, big diving double axe handle there to the outside. MLP being taken on a tour of the world here. Oh, turning things around now. Thomas Knight introduced to a table here at ringside. Martin Justice making the count. These competitors have got to keep an eye on the referee or risk a double disqualification, or a, excuse me, a double count out here. Now, I do have to tell you, that does fit directly into the favor of MLP, and we've seen MLP take count out victories in the past. Whatever it takes to get the championship or keep the championship, might I add. However, Sir Thomas Knight's got to be the one with some urgency here. They now slowly rolling back into the ring. That bundle of bones is tired. But a little bit of recovery time and breaking the fall. MLP is back out on the attack. Thomas Knight, not where you want to be. See him recover there. He managed to capitalize. Sometimes a momentary and uh, abrupt Force shift, a change in momentum very quickly can lead to the victory. What are they doing here? These two are just fighting on the apron. MLP on the apron. It's not often that we see this, the super kick. Flattening Sir Thomas Knight. Thomas Knight down in the corner trying to find that air that had just been driven out of him courtesy of the fantastically educated feet of MLP. Oh no, what is this? What is MLP looking for here? MLP, pile driver on the apron. Thomas Knight's neck has been compressed. The vertebrae have been mashed. The man damn well may be paralyzed, Walker. Bile driver, he can't even remember. Sir Thomas Knight has been taken out from this contest. Both of these men are down. The count is on. It was desperation for MLP, and it very well may be the last thing Sir Thomas Knight ever experienced. Yeah, at this point, it might be more merciful to end the matchup via count out. Referee Martin Justice, I know it's fully at his discretion here, but somehow MLP and Sir Thomas Knight back inside the ring. Both men back and Thomas Knight's going for a pinfall here. Managing to get to, these two have been going back and forth. They're both worse for the wear. As Thomas Knight, it looks like he was trying to bite MLP there. I'm not sure how much you can actually achieve there with the mask in the way, but it's worth a shot if you want that XDWF Next Gen Championship. It's all on the line here tonight, the XDWF New Gen X Championship. What is this? This night he's going for something. MLP countering, rolling through with the jackknife pin. The jackknife was not enough here, James. It was not. It got MLP a two count. He now trying to regain that vertical base. Back to the face there, courtesy of MLP. Thomas Knight returning the favor. Now we're trading the fists. These two tagging each other, lighting each other up. Thomas Knight trying to charge through MLP. Close lines him back into the corner using all the force. Thomas Knight charging now. Big shoulder tackles in the corner. MLP fighting for dear life. Those clubbing his shots, freeing his ribs from the impingement of the shoulder of Thomas Knight. MLP. What are we seeing here? Sir Thomas Knight. Going back to it. 
We went for something similar earlier. Thomas Knight, oh my God! Canadian Destroyer by Thomas Knight, and that's it! We have a new XDWF champion! Canadian Destroyer, I told you he was a northerner. What a victory here from Sir Thomas Knight. James Sir Thomas Knight has proven what everyone in the state of Oklahoma has known all along. The MLB is all bones and no heart. What a victory for Thomas Knight. Time here at UWO Walker. The Crow Cup quarterfinals are underway. And here comes the murder man. Well, a, a very disturbing individual is Kilbane, whether it be uh, the way he can physically impose himself on opponents or whether it be well, just his, his various other actions outside of the ring. Kilbane, the murder man here, live in our main event. Perhaps a little more up close and personal of a view than we would have liked to have received. But nonetheless, Kilbane is here. He's making children cry. He's licking cameras. He's an absolute monster walker. I know about two of the three of those things. However, Kilbane educating me on the third. And I'm not going to indicate which one for you, James. I'm going to leave that to your discretion. Tonight, the UWO champion in action in our main event non-title matchup here, James. It is all for the UWO Crow Cup, a quarterfinals matchup. The brawler Christopher Morrison, UWO champion. He's going to be taking on Kilbane here tonight. Finals. He might be the UWO champion, but nothing more prestigious than the Crow Cup tonight. Chris Morrison wanting to advance. 
What a statement it would be to be the UWO champion and claim the Crow Cup as well. No one would be more dominant than brawler Chris Morrison. He is feeling it. He's got this crowd behind him. If Chris Morrison can walk away, not only with the UWO Championship, but at Sooner World Class Wrestling's return, the UWO Crow Cup winner for the year of 2023, he would truly solidify himself not only as the most dominant competitor in UWO, but also the most dominant competitor in the state of Oklahoma entirely. No better way to do it then come out the champion and walk out the cup winner. That's the goal for one Chris Morrison. The murder man, Colt Kilbane, looking to put his stamp here in UWO. We've seen him a couple of times here at events in the Tulsa area, but what a better way to solidify yourself full time here on the UWO roster then walk away with the victory in the Crow Cup tournament. No. Turn some heads in the office and get yourself a shot on further down the road. Now, now we've seen Kilbane face off for the UWO Championship in the past, and we've seen matches between Kilbane and Chris Morrison in the past. However, not with the stakes here of the UWO Crow Cup tournament for 2023 being on the line. Gotta wonder if the mentality changes at all for Kilbane walking into a matchup like this. I think you see it in the intensity from both competitors. You see Morrison cranking it up there, bringing out some of that speed we don't usually see from the brawler. And, and outright, I can say this from the get-go, the UWO champion Morrison has been putting in the work, he's been hitting the gym, really representing Unified Wrestling Oklahoma as a phenomenal champion, however, has he met his match in Kilbane here tonight? Of course, as we said, non-title competition. However, if Kilbane can pick up a victory in any fashion over Morrison, he has to be earning himself a right for the UWO Championship matchup at a, at a later date, correct? You know that's got to weigh in the UWO management's mind. You see somebody who can beat your champion, they obviously deserve a shot at the gold but Kilbane's got a lot to prove as things are just getting started in this one. Kilbane getting sent that pillar to post, trying to find the slightest bit of reprieve anywhere he can away from Morrison. Morrison taking it to Kilbane here. Kilbane trying to fight back for all he's worth but it does no good. Morrison stays on top of him. The dog is still attacking. And then James, this one is going all around the American Legion Mohawk right here, right now. This is our main event of the evening. Nothing could possibly top this tonight. We can't see it on our monitors, but I'm looking over here next to us, and they are brawling like madmen. Morrison uh, fighting to show why he's UWO champion. Kilbane fighting to show why he belongs in this tournament, why he thinks he's gonna win the Crow Cup, but he's got to walk through our champion first. Chris Morrison is a bad, bad man and he is willing to show that up close and personal to everyone here at the American Legion tonight. Uh, I spoke with Kilbane before tonight's professional wrestling event, and I asked him, I said, you're facing off against Morrison, who, as you mentioned, a very bad, bad man. He said, well, Morrison very well may be a bad man, but he is not a murder man. That's where the difference is between Kilbane and Morrison. Very strong differentiation there by Kilbane. He insists he's willing to do whatever it takes to get the job done. And he's already got Chris Morrison busted open. That's a pretty good shot. The blood is a flowing and the life is being choked out of one Chris Morrison. Yeah. 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 As you mentioned, the 
blood is starting to pour out of the skull of Chris Morrison. This is a position that we've seen him in before, not just here at UWO, but also all across the professional wrestling scene. But here in Tulsa, Oklahoma at UWO, we saw this exact same scene when Morrison faced off against Sam Stackhouse in Oklahoma's very first ever death match. But who came out on top in that one? It was one Chris Morrison, the brawler himself, the bad man from Slaughterville, found himself on the winning end of things. And if things go his way, that's where he'll be tonight. But Kilbane is doing his best to prevent that. There, there's no way you can live in an area titled Slaughterville and not be one of the toughest men on your block. Very aptly named place indeed. The slaughter has only begun, even though things are looking a little worse for uh, Chris Morrison at this time. Kilbane firmly in control, but we've still got to see. We've seen Chris Morrison come back from very precarious places in the past. There have been moments I've been sure he was going to lose that UWO championship, but he found a way to rally. We've still got to see if that will be the case here tonight in Tulsa. Don't forget Morrison, a two-time UWO champion. Hold on a minute, cover, no. Only two out of that monstrous spine buster. You saw Chris Morrison's spine nearly driven through the pine in the center of the ring. Kilbane going for that elbow again and missing once again. Now being lit up by a series of chops and punches. A tribute to one of his heroes, Tenryu. Chris Morrison sends Kilbane out of the corner. It was a big, hard shot to the turnbuckles. Hip attack by Morrison. That train is starting to roll. Morrison staggering with the loss of blood. Kilbane spearing Morrison. Dead center, this could be it. One, two. And as close as you can get before Chris Morrison found the strength to kick out. That was, that was not just a spear, James. That was a game-changing interception for Kilbane. But can he maintain the momentum? It seems as though Morrison's already back on his feet. Quick to recover is our champion. Kilbane right there on top of him, though. Morrison fighting back with all of his heart, digging deep and driving that foot to the back of the head. Kilbane kicking out at two. Curb stomp or not, there's still a lot of life left in the murder man. Kilbane going for something here. Gotch style lift, dropped him down. Almost a three count on that Gotch drop there. Kilbane is very frustrated. Morrison managed to get to that bottom rope. Now he's trying to argue with our official Martin Justice. I don't think that's gonna get you very far, Kilbane. You've gotta stay on your man. And the Oklahoma Strangler trying to take advantage of it. Man-to-man yeah, -man contact here between both individuals. A defeat there by Kilbane. Gets him two and a half. Morrison still out though, still finding a way to kick out. Digging deep within himself. He's losing blood, he's losing stamina, but yet Chris Morrison finds a way to kick out. Cobain getting rid of that elbow pad, bringing that big bionic elbow down. He's calling for the end here, James. Body drop though by Morrison. He wasn't getting that gotch lift this time. It's gonna take a lot for him to be able to apply it again. But look at this cut, Morrison. This has got to be where Morrison wants him here, James. Morrison with that sleeper hold. You see Kilbane tapping. It's over. He's gone limp. Just seconds is all it takes. 
Kilbay knew he was caught. He was tapping, and within moments, he was asleep. The UWO champion, Chris Morrison, moves on in the Crow Cup tournament. What a finale here in Tulsa Walker. And he's, uh, he's not just moving on, but he is moving on to face either Red James or Cappuccino Jones, September 9th, Midwest City, Oklahoma, RDWUWO Revenge. That's gonna be a hell of a night of professional wrestling action. Bruised, bloodied, and beaten. Chris Morrison walks away your victor. The UWO champion reigns supreme, and we would like to thank all of you. Uh, those of you that came out and joined us in American Legion Mohawk Post 308, those of you who are watching on YouTube and Patreon, we want to thank you all for joining us. It has been a monumental night of action. Chris Morrison moves on in the Crow Cup. Adrian Vega also advances to face Ricky Wingrave. The semifinals are set. Ricky Wingrave, Adrian Vega, Chris Morrison, and we will see. We've still got Red James and Cappuccino Jones coming up, but we're marching on towards that championship. Chris Morrison, bloodied, battered, but still. So, wait a minute, what? Well, that's defiant Derek James. We spoke about it in our opening contest where he fell victim to one Brandon Groom. But defiant Derek James does have the, the sure shot championship opportunity that he defeated the leader of the regime at Merck for back in Oklahoma City. But Well, and if you just heard it, Derek James said this is perfect timing. It looks like they might have been watching in a monitor in the back. Well, and there's CM Burnham. At least a, a former advisor to one Chris Morrison. That was a partnership that had lasted many years. But came to an end as... This is... Folks, this is an unraveling situation as we are experiencing it. We we are we had no idea what I don't think Chris Morrison had any idea that Derek James was planning on making an appearance here at the end of our broadcast. We were uh, James, this is this is unprecedented. I don't even I'm trying to it looks like Chris Morrison has just thrown down the belt. Sam Burnham says he's going to keep his eyes on Mike Andrews. It looks like we might have a re-alliance here. Of Chris Morrison and Sam Burnham, a, a reunion I never honestly expected. Wait, this is... It seems as though it is official. Derek James is going to be cashing in that sure shot opportunity to cover. No. It was only a two count. A premature ringing of the bell. Oh, so close. Even our timekeeper thought it was three. Our official says no. Derek James trying to lock in a, a sleeper hold similar to that of our champion, Chris Morrison's. Morrison finds the rope, though. This, this is a shocking moment here, James. It's hard to even wrap your head around what the situation we're looking at entails. But Derek James, he's had an opportunity for the past four months. He's finally deciding to cash in. Tonight, we might have a new UWO champion. Morrison, he's down and out. Look at this. No. Only two, the fight within the heart of Chris Morrison. It knows no bounds. Those chops. Morrison crumbling all his weight. Derek James has had all night to rest up and prepare for this opportunity. Morrison just got done defeating uh, Colt Kilbane in what we thought was our main event of the evening, but 
we've got a UWO championship match, and I'm still trying to grasp my mind around this. This is a very unprecedented situation if you're following us live right now on YouTube. Uh, our, our fans in attendance here at American Legion Mohawk in Tulsa, Oklahoma are just as shocked as myself and James Southern are. However, Derek James, this has to have been in the game plan. This has to have been in the work somehow, in some way. I mean, Derek James, he had a, a very uh, back and forth competitive matchup between himself and Brandon Groom to start off our, our evening here tonight. And Derek James fell victim to a, a jackknife pinning attempt from Brandon Groom. Now, Derek James caught catching Chris Morrison. Morrison, watch out! Oh my! Morrison perhaps trying to bust open Derek James in a very, a very similar way, excuse me, to that that he was busted open by Kilbane in that Pro Cup quarterfinal match. Mike Andrews down there checking on his client. Yeah, the relationship between Marvelous Mike Andrews and Derek James well documented, as well as that between Marvelous Mike Andrews and CM Burnham, and that has to be the reason that Burnham is his president ringside here tonight. He knows exactly what Mike Andrews is capable of. We're evening the playing field in an already very uneven playing field. It's a very interesting circumstance, James. See that leg drop draping the neck across the middle rope and the other side being compressed by all of Derek James' weight, trying to drive that air, drive that life force out of Morrison. Chris Morrison having none of it, though. He's fighting for his life. He's fighting for that UWO championship. He is fighting for it all. Drop toe hold here into the ropes. Derek James has Morrison exactly where he wants him. Is he going for that leg drop again? No, drop kick this time. Sending Morrison back inside the ring. Yeah, signature drop kick, the cover, no. Only a two. Derek James can't let himself get frustrated. He's gotta stay on top of Morrison. The night has only begun. Rolling arm bar here, trying to break that grip, break that S grip, the interlocked fingers of Chris Morrison to hyperextend that elbow. Morrison stacking James's weight up in a very similar way to that in which Brandon Groom pinned Derek James earlier. And these two trading chops in the center of the chest, uh, in the center of the ring, excuse me. The shots are to the chest. These two just going back and forth. Heavy hands of plenty. This is all for the pride, the glory of the gold, the UWO championship. Derek James wants to walk away with what he believes to be is rightfully his. So now caught him. Big overhead suplex into the corner there. Morrison losing a fair amount of blood now. He's got to be starting to get weak, get dizzy. That blood loss is a real serious effect. Derek James now, I believe. Derek James is busted open too. Now on the receiving end of these chops. Morrison. A two-time UWO heavyweight champion that showcases one thing. He not only knows how to win championships, but he's also been on the losing end of championship matches as well. Tonight could be the night for the Defiant One. Derek James trying to uh, regain that UWO championship and join the second reign club. Currently right now, Chris Morrison, the only man to have two reigns with the UWO heavyweight championship. Derek James trying to add his name to that list. Big side suplex there. Morrison in the corner. Derek James right back on top of him. James out of the corner. Catching the boot of Morrison. Look at this. And you can see where that confidence is coming from on Mike Andrews' part. Into the cover, Derek James. Getting two, and the hand almost reached the mat for that three count. Derek James is incredibly close right now. Fire in Derek James, you're seeing it coming through. Going for that waist lock, succeeding in a German suplex on the bigger Chris Morrison. 
Forearms now going back and forth. These two might want to make sure their teeth are secured. With little teeth Chris Morrison has left. Could be knocked out if he's not careful. He's on the offense right now. Derek James. This is certainly where Morrison feels at home. You mentioned the missing teeth. The signs of a fighter. Is Derek James willing to go that far? We'll have to find out. He just got pile driven dead center of the ring. That pile driver absolutely impactful, but Chris Morrison for the UWO Championship. Everything is on the line tonight. You see marvelous Mike Andrews in the corner of defiant Derek James, the man who has staked his claim tonight, looking to walk away. The second ever two-time UWO champion in history. Well, speaking of Mike Andrews, what is Mike? Mike Andrews and, and CM Burnham. CM Burnham, what the? What on? What on God's green earth are we witnessing right here? CM Burnham just struck Morrison with with Mike Andrews selfie stick. What? Our official is down and out. This is absolute negligence. This, this is the worst reality. What is going on here? Good God. The cover for defiant Derek James. Morrison's completely down and out. No one in his corner. No one to save him. Two. We have a new UWO heavyweight champion. Wrestling fans, what a moment we have had here tonight live at Unified Wrestling Oklahoma Parade of Champions. A new lot of championship contender status is here tonight at UWO. Chris Morrison knocked down a peg or two. No longer UWO heavyweight champion, currently reigning and defending defiant Derek James. Folks, I've been Walker Stewart for James Southern. We'll see you next time for more Unified Wrestling Oklahoma action only on YouTube.